Welcome back everybody to Keenan K TV. In this video, I want to go over the Kevin Lee vs. Rafael Dos Anjos fight and give my immediate reaction to the fight. So Kevin Lee ended up losing this fight in the 4th round via arm triangle choke to Rafael Dos Anjos, Rafael defeating Kevin Lee in his welterweight debut. Now for me personally, when it came to Kevin Lee and making this jump to 170, I believe it was just premature. It was way too early i feel like the problem in kevin lee's game in my opinion was not the weight cut now obviously i cannot speak for kevin lee but obviously he is a pretty big 155 pounder so making the weight may have not been the easiest thing for kevin lee but thus far he was able to make the weight and he made it consistently he made it against tony ferguson he made it against Edson Barboza. he made it against ali Quinta. so even though he may struggle to make the weight he still made the weight and obviously there is this phenomenon going around these days that say that fighters they should fight at their natural weight class for example somebody like kevin lee they should you know supposedly they should be fighting at 170 and look how that turned out right look how it turned out for kevin lee he was going in there against somebody who was a lot i don't want to say a big welterweight but rafael los Anjos, he already outgrew the 155 pound division rafael los Anjos is about 34 35 years old right so he has just that grown man size that muscle that just he just has the old man strength the old man muscle gained and when it comes to kevin lee he's still young he's only 26 years old so him making the jump to 170 it's not the same as um, Rafael Los Angeles moving up because Rafael just he couldn't simply make it you know if he just tried to do it again he would probably ser seriously injure himself trying to make the weight whereas Kevin Lee yes it may suck for him but he can still make it and for me personally I believe he was lucky Kevin Lee he was lucky to go in there against somebody like Rafael Los Angeles who was a former 155 fighter so he was not going in there with the biggest or the strongest of welterweights for example can you imagine how a fight between Kevin Lee and Tyron Woodley would have played out a fight between um, Robbie Lawler and Kevin Lee um, Kevin Lee versus Ben Askren Kevin Lee versus Kamaru Usman Kevin Lee versus Colby Covington I mean the size difference is just going to be huge and there was no way that Kevin Lee would ever be competitive in the weight class yes you know he may be competitive and the aspect of like okay he can make it a close fight he can have his moments but that is just what is to be expected at the top level of MMA right that is just something that is just expected for example, if you take Benson Henderson, when he made the move to once um, to 170 in Bellator, yeah, we know that, ben, um, ben, that Benson Henderson had a tough time making 155. So he was like, you know, let me just go up and wait and fight at 170 because, you know, that's going to be that's going to be my quote unquote natural weight class. And he goes in there against, I, I believe, um, Churkinov, some Russian champion at the time. And he goes in there and he completely just gets weight bullied in the octagon. Now, that is a severe case of what happened, right? When it comes to Kevin Lee's case, it's not really that much. Kevin Lee, in this matchup, in the first two rounds, he was setting a pace that, yes, he was able to outwork Rafael Los Anjos in certain scenarios, but it was always a fight where Rafael was always in it. Even though Kevin Lee may have had success, Rafael was able to come back. And I'm not saying that Rafael won just because he was bigger. No, I'm not saying that at all. But the, the weight, for, for example, the weight is just something that would be playing a factor regardless in the grand scheme of things in his future. For Rafael Los Angeles to beat Kevin Lee, you know, it just came down to skill because in my eyes, they were both the same size and it really just came down to skill in that matchup. Kevin Lee blew his load too early. I felt like he was trying to apply a game plan that, for example, Colby Covington was able to apply. But Colby Covington, as underrated as he is, his stamina, his work ethic, his endurance is just top notch. He's, he has probably the best endurance and stamina in the welterweight division, probably maybe next to Kamaru Usman himself. So for Kevin Lee to just try to weight bully and size bully um, Rafael Los Anjos the same way that Kobe Covington was able to pin um, Rafael, Rafael Los Anjos against the cage, you know, I never saw it happening for the duration of the five rounds. So as the second round ended, we saw Kevin Lee starting to take a lot more breaths through his mouth and Rafael seemingly he was fine. He was fine and he was not struggling with his stamina. He was not struggling with his endurance. Whereas Kevin Lee, he was noticeably getting slower, um, a lot more flat-footed. His punches became a bit more sloppy. He became easier to take down and he became easier to hit, right? His head movement was starting to decline as well. So as the round progressed, I would have to say by the fourth round, it was a 2-2. And if the fight ended up going to the fifth round, 
you know, Rafael would have probably wanted. But Rafael was able to get a submission victory over Kevin Lee, crushing Kevin Lee's future at once. I mean, I don't want to say he crushed his future. Maybe Kevin Lee is still planning on staying at 170, which is not going to be something that I would think would be the smartest. Obviously, Kevin Lee would know, you know, he would know it the best. It is his career at the end of the day. But I would have to say for him to be as effective with that style as he, you know, could be, he has to be at 155. You know, he's not he's not going to be pressuring and taking guys down like he did, for example, with Edson Barboza at 170. It is just not going to be happening. Not at all. I mean, his power is not going to be as effective at 170. Um, his speed, you know, everything is going to be affected. You know, yes, he may have to suffer a little bit on the scales, but the effects are just a lot more beneficial for him come fight night. So I hope Kevin Lee goes back to 155 and pursues his career there. I mean, yeah, he did lose to Ally Quinta, but it was a fight where he could have made a couple of adjustments and edged out a couple more rounds. And probably he would have beaten Ally Quinta if the right adjustments were made. He's still young. He's only 26 years old and he's already fought 22, 22 times in, uh, in MMA as a professional. So he hasn't taken too much damage, I would say. You know, Kevin Lee, he's, he's, he's still pretty young adjustments can be made he can come back um, as a better fighter but being two wins with three losses in your last five fights that's not the best thing to go off of you know so i don't know how it will affect him mentally i don't think it will be affecting him positively i think he has had too many crushing defeats right i felt like him going in there against Rafael was something where he mentally was some you know i felt like he mentally wrote like a new chapter right mentally i would be expecting him to feel like okay this is like the new chapter in my life the new chapter in my career this is going to be at 170 i'm going to be better than i was at 155 boom he goes in there and gets finished not too not too hot right and two fights ago, fighting Tony Ferguson for the interim world title, he gets finished there as well. So two crushing defeats in, in his last five fights. I don't know where he will be. You know, Kevin Lee seems to be a pretty positive guy. Um, I don't know where he would go, really. Hopefully back to 155. And for Rafael Los Anjos, this is a pretty good win. Not in terms of a good win for the welterweight division, because for Rafael, the same can be applied. I don't think Rafael is the best size welterweight out there. I mean, he went in there, he got... Our muscled, our size, you know, you know, quote unquote, weight bullied by um, half, uh, by Kobe Covington. He was just not able to um, muscle him off of him um, as he was able to against Kevin Lee. When it comes to Usman, he was, you know, Usman was able to pressure him and use his size to to his advantage. Um, he did defeat Robbie Lawler, but Robbie Lawler, he's kind of on a decline as well. So fortunate timing when it comes to fighters moving up but Rafael I don't really see a big future for him maybe he can go in there and fight Anthony Pettis after Anthony Pettis is done fighting um Nate Diaz obviously they have some they have some future and Anthony Pettis seems to be wanting to get that fight back only time will tell how these things will be playing out obviously we don't know if Pettis is going to defeat Diaz I would favor him to beat Diaz but if Diaz defeats Anthony Pettis who would Nate Diaz fight would he still fight at 170 I don't really know if he does win Hopefully, he's going to fight Conor McGregor for him. Obviously, that's a fight that um, Nate Diaz is looking forward to at all times. Um, but yeah, I think overall, this card was an okay card. In the grand scheme of things, not much has changed for Rafael Los Anjos when it comes to Kevin Lee. He just took another devastating loss. Hopefully, he goes back to 155. We'll only see. You know, We'll see what is next for Kevin Lee. Hopefully, he'll be back. He's still pretty young, so I wish him the best. So with that being said, guys, this was my instant recap instant review of the kevin lee versus Rafael on just fight leave what you guys think of the fight in the comment section down below as always i have been keenan from keenan ktv signing off later